It's time for another TPK. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. I probably should be showing you part two of my new big modular cave set, but the reality is it's still sitting right there. Hasn't been coated in Black Mod Podge yet. So I don't got much to show you. Um, it's been a very busy past couple weeks for me. And also today is Father's Day. So I have a very limited amount of time this weekend to actually film an episode. So this is exactly why I started this TPK series. Because when I have limited time, I can just impart some random knowledge on you guys that I've been thinking about and wanting to share. One subject I would like to cover is the issue of time, specifically time to craft. People often ask, how the hell do you find time to build all this stuff and also film it and have a job and a kid and a YouTube channel? Like, how do you do it? With great difficulty, um, time is very, precious and I have to manage my time really well. I film on certain days, I have a certain amount of time allotted to that and I follow it strictly. But when it comes to the matter of actually like crafting, building neat stuff for my game, especially highly involved builds that take a lot of hours, how do I do it? And there's a couple things. The, the main thing is that I build in the evenings when the rest of the house is in bed and sleeping. I deprive myself of sleep and I stay up into the wee hours of the night during the week and craft. And that's not ideal because I don't get all the rest that I would like to, but you got to take the time that you can get. But the big, most important factor when trying to find time for your hobby is stopping watching TV or movies. Now this isn't going to be advice that is universal because some of you already might not watch a lot of TV or play a lot of video games or do that kind of media stuff. And I used to love watching movies and TV series and getting really into them and keeping up to date. But since starting this hobby and doing this channel, I've pretty much entirely cut television out of my life. I've got one or two shows that when they are back on the air, like Game of Thrones, I will spend some time each week watching the episode. But that's about it. Um, lately, Twin Peaks is back and I've been managing to find some time to watch that because it's Twin Peaks and I've been waiting 25 goddamn years. <sighs> Can you believe it's back? I stopped watching TV. Sometimes when I am building or crafting, I will play something on the shop TV here and kind of have it on in the background, but actually sitting on the couch and spending three hours watching something every night, I cut that out of my life completely. I don't play video games. The last video game that I played was Assassin's Creed 3. So it was like at that time when I just cut that right out of my life. And I mean, yeah, I'm sacrificing a enjoyable pastime and hobby. I'm no longer up to date on what's going on in different media, but it allows me some time to do my hobby that I love the most. So that's something to consider if you are having a hard time finding time to craft. Maybe give up something else that isn't as productive. Now let's talk a little bit about foam. Two things I want to cover. First is, I, a little while ago, uh, I think when I did the basics video on XPS foam, got a question posted where someone asked me if they should remove the plastic film on the outside of the pink insulation foam. And I was really confused by this question because I have bought tons and tons of this stuff and I've never seen any sort of film on it. So I thought maybe they were just a little bit crazy. Maybe they were buying the wrong thing. Maybe they thought there was a film that wasn't really there. I, I don't know. I just, I didn't know what they were talking about. Just, you know, let them know that I buy it without it. So I would say, take it off if you have it, but I, I did, it didn't make sense to me. 
And as time progressed, I got this question a few more times. And I think like four times I've had people ask me if they should remove this plastic film. And the last time I straight up said, what are you talking about? What plastic film? I've never seen this before. And I had them send me a picture and sure enough, it was pink foamular insulation. The exact same stuff I use and many of you use. They had a picture of them peeling off a layer of thick, clear protective plastic. I don't know why it was on there. They were in the US, but for some reason, that specific area, the foam had a plastic protective coating on it. And 90% of the time it doesn't. So why some areas have it, I don't know. But yeah, if you come across it with that film on it, take it off because you don't want it on there. It's not going to allow you to carve stuff. You're not probably going to want to be hot wire tooling that plastic. Just get rid of it. So I, I can't tell you why it's there, but get rid of it if you come across it. The other foam that I and many crafters, especially DM Scotty, like to use is this dollar store foam core board. And you've probably seen in some of my videos and a lot of Scotty's him easily peeling the paper off this stuff. It just comes off like a dream. A lot of people struggle with this because they will go to a store other than the Dollar Tree and buy some foam core and try to peel the paper off and it's stuck really well. Now, the thing is, every other brand uses a glue that is very permanent, whereas the Ready Board brand sold specifically at Dollar Tree uses a very weak glue that makes this paper really easy to remove. So you gotta buy the stuff at the Dollar Tree, but that's not even what I'm getting at because you probably already know that. An interesting thing has happened lately and I was informed by one of the community members on DM Scotty's Crafts and Games. Uh, she's also a Patreon supporter. You can buy this ready board from Dollar Tree, ready brown, whatever it's called, in black and white. And they've always been the same. It's just two different colors of paper and you're gonna peel it off anyway, so it doesn't matter. But lately, some people have been having a hard time peeling the paper off the white variety. The black stuff peels off fine, but the white is sticking. And when this came up in the Facebook groups, I instantly thought, uh-oh, we're all screwed. This brand who has been using inferior glue that made it easy to re remove the paper has finally upped their game and started using better glue. And now all of a sudden we won't have this stuff that you can easily peel off. But I was actually incorrect in assuming that the reason it peels off easily was because of a flaw of this cheap foam core. This community member, Raven, actually took the effort to reach out to the manufacturer of this foam and ask them about it, which is amazing. It's, it's something that I wish I had thought of to do, but they did it and I am very grateful for that. And what was found out from the company is that they actually intentionally make their glue not very strong so that you can peel the paper off because they're marketing this not as a poster board for like science fairs and different things where you want the paper on. They're marketing it as a craft foam with the intention of you peeling the paper off so you can work with it, which is amazing. Uh, they put the paper on just to protect it in shipping. And the reason that the white stuff all of a sudden is harder to peel off is because they did change their glue, but they realized that it's a problem and they're working on getting it back to being able to peel off. So I thought this was really interesting that what I thought was a manufacturer flaw was in fact totally intentional. And we've all been using this stuff the way they intended it, which is cool. But for now, if you're buying this stuff, buy the black stuff because apparently a big batch of the white stuff is hard to pull off. And you can always test it in the store, right, to see. But just buy the black stuff, because as far as I know, at this point in time, it is all still easy to peel off. Now, I want to take this TPK opportunity to talk a little bit about handheld hot wire cutters. 
because one of the questions that is coming up quite a bit, both in on my videos and in the different Facebook communities, is a handheld cutter good enough? Can you get away with just owning one of these if you don't want to spend the money on a bigger hot wire table like the one Proxon makes? And I try to always answer that question to the best of my ability when it comes up. And the answer is kind of, uh, maybe, it depends what you want to do. Yes, this will cut through foam just as well as the Proxon hot wire table. The problem is it's going to perform a very different type of cut. So it depends what you're trying to do. You have to think of these as versions of regular woodworking tools. And the hot wire table is more comparable to a table saw slash scroll saw. It performs both the kinds of cuts that a table saw and a scroll saw can, meaning you can rip and cut straight square pieces at a defined width using the fence or the cross cut guide. And you can freehand cut like a scroll saw. Your cuts will be um, perfectly plumb. If you set your saw upright, you can do angled cuts. It is meant to machine and mill parts to specific measurements. These handhelds are more akin to, I would say something like, maybe like a jigsaw where you have to freehand cut and it's better for wavy cuts and shapes and it's not ideal for straight cuts. So if one of the bigger tables is out of your budget and you only want to spend a little bit on a handheld one, that's fine as long as you realize you will have some limitations. With one of these, you will not be able to cut three inch by three inch square tiles perfectly or rip a bunch of strips that are exactly the same size like you can on the hot wire table. I'm sure it's possible that you can create some kind of jig to make that work, but it's a lot of effort. That being said, these are great for a lot of things, especially stuff like cutting rocks and freehand wavy kind of cuts. These are awesome for that. You can also use this to cut your material thinner if you make a jig. And both myself and John Susky from Dungeons and Glue Sticks were doing this before we had our Proxon tables. We would make up jigs where we took dowels or strips of wood and glued them to a board and basically created a little channel where you could put a piece of foam and if you ran your tool along the wood it allowed you to cut thin strips and you could make shingles and planking and different stuff like that. Now the problem with that is you can only cut material up to a certain width this way and you have to first break that material down into a size that can fit in your jig. But you can think outside the box a little bit and use a handheld cutter to do that sort of thing. If you're thinking of buying one of these, um, the Hotwire Foam Factory one is okay. The Woodland Scenics one is, is also okay. But I wanna warn you about this tool. It is made incredibly cheaply. It feels like something that came out of the dollar store and it does not really justify the price of it. This, these arms that hold the wire, which you want to be fairly taut when cutting to get a nice clean cut, are just held with these screws and bolts that no matter how tight you make them will never hold the damn wire tight. It is a serious flaw in the design of this thing and in order to cut it, I find myself having to use my fingers to create tension on these rods to keep a tight wire. And that drives me crazy. But what really pisses me off about the company that makes this and makes this flaw is that they're aware of it and they actually sell an individual piece. It's a tension bar that you can install on this to keep it tight. And they charge you like 10 or 15 bucks for that thing. And you have to buy it separately. And I think that's a load of hooey because it's a known flaw in their design and they sell a piece to correct it. It should just be included with this tool. That being said, if the price is right for you and you want to buy one, 
I don't want to say no, still go through my Amazon store and buy one because they're useful and I can still get a small commission on it. So I ain't going to say no to that. But the reality is if you're going to buy one, you should spend the money on that tensioning bar. I wish they included it for free, but they don't. And since I'm up in Canada, I'm not spending more money on shipping one of those things. So this thing doesn't get used too often. Because I got one of these now, and this is the handheld hot wire cutter by Proxon. And this thing is far superior to the hot wire foam factory one. It is highly adjustable. You can do all sorts of different types of cuts with it. It has this arm that pivots and you can adjust and make bigger or smaller. The wire is thicker and can actually be bent and formed to different shapes. So you can use it like a router and cut different grooves and make all sorts of cool cuts with it. It has a adjustable temperature dial that I'm sure you all know now how important that is from seeing me work with the hot wire table. This thing is way better. I am not gonna lie. I haven't had a ton of time to play with it since getting it, but I can tell out of the box, it is far superior to the Hotwire Foam Factory one. Now, keep in mind, Hotwire Foam Factory does also sell a sculpting tool with a wire like this that is adjustable, but in order to use it, you need a special power transformer, and the combination of that transformer and that tool makes it more expensive, so at that point, I would just get the better quality companies one. With this one as well, you do need to buy a uh, power transformer and Proxon makes a few different ones. I have one that they sent me that is their bigger one that I can plug multiple tools in. Uh, they use this kind of proprietary power connection, but you can just buy one. I can't remember the price offhand for this and the uh, power supply, but I'm going to put links in my affiliate store as well as in the description so that if you guys want to check it out and buy one, you can. I don't want to talk too much about it and go into too much detail because like I said, I haven't had a chance to use it much, but I can tell. I, I can tell when a tool is good and this tool is pretty good. Just even this, like look at these adjustments. You can slide these bars out, adjust this, make this wire tight. They've actually designed it so that this strip is very thin in the middle so that if you pull this wire tight and straight, you can cut it straight through a piece of foam and this will travel through the cut. Whereas you could never use this to cut directly through a piece of foam because it would just stop. So you can actually use this to break down pieces to more manageable sizes to use on different tools. It's got a trigger, which I really like, so you can hold and release. And yeah, it is just a better handheld hot wire tool. But if you're gonna invest in this, maybe then you might as well just get the table because I think the table is more versatile for what we're doing. But if you already have a table and you're looking to expand your arsenal, one of those is really good. So did I answer the question? Is a handheld one good enough? Do you need a hot wire table? And it depends what you're looking for. Uh, it, handhelds, no matter how good, can't replace a table for milling straight, square, repetitive material. They're great for artistic, wavy sort of stuff. And they're great if you can happen to have both. So anyways, guys, that's it for this week. A little short TPK for y'all. Uh, if you have any more questions about the Proxon uh, handheld cutter or power supplies, drop me a comment. I will answer them to the best of my ability. And I'm going to touch on them more later once I've had time to play with them more, but I don't like talking too much about stuff when I haven't really given it its due diligence, but my first impressions. So if you found this video useful, guys, hit that like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to help out the channel by purchasing some stuff through my Amazon affiliate store, or you just want to pick up some of the stuff I recommend, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There you can see my essential equipment page where I link to all the stuff that I use and love. And guys, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. The funds from my supporters are essential to keeping this channel going. 
So if you want to throw a few bucks my way each month, it would go a long way to helping this channel succeed. Until next time, guys, happy crafting.